Sabine, you've taken the position that uh, with all the new thinking in physics that we see theoretically and, and experimentally, you've taken the view that uh, for the last 40 years, since the standard model, there have been no real breakthroughs. Uh, can you explain? Yes, that's right. I have uh, argued that in the past 40 years, uh, there has basically been no progress in the foundations of physics ever since the development of the standard model. It is certainly true that uh, we have added uh, more information to the standard model and also to general relativity, which is a theory that is even older. Um, for example, there have been some particles in the standard model that we have only found later uh, in the 90s and the latest particle, uh, the Higgs boson, which has been confirmed in 2012. Um, and we have added back the cosmological constant okay. uh, to general relativity. Um, so there have been a few additions of constants uh, here and there. But if you look at the mathematical structure of the theories, it has remained entirely unchanged since the 1970s, basically. And uh, it's not like we're done in the foundations of physics. We know that the theories that we currently have do have unsolved problems. And ever since the completion of the standard model, physicists have tried to solve these problems, but um, they have not managed to. So let's uh, uh, describe some of the ways that people have used. Certainly string theory is one. Uh, and then there are alternative theories trying, is unifying uh, gravity uh, with the other forces and, and, and with uh, general relativity sort of the key question uh, to make progress? That is certainly one of the key questions. Um, general relativity is just not compatible with the standard model. Um, there's, uh, and it's an embarrassingly simple reason for why that is. Um, it's that all the particles that we have in the standard model, um, they have quantum properties. Um, they have all this fancy spooky behavior, mm -hmm. the way that the press likes to put it, where particles can be in two places at once. Um, and those particles have masses and the masses generate a gravitational pull, which brings up the question, if you have a particle that is in two places at the same time, where does the gravitational pull mm -hmm. go? Mm -hmm. And um, the theory that we have for gravity right now, Einstein's theory of general relativity, just cannot answer that question because it cannot accommodate quantum properties. So to answer that question, we need a theory of quantum gravity. Uh, basically, since um, general relativity is about the structure of space-time, it would be a theory that describes the quantum behavior of space and time itself. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, string theory is one of the approaches to that theory of quantum gravity. Um, there have been a couple of other approaches, uh, loop quantum gravity, asymptotically safe gravity, um, uh, causal dynamical triangulation, and so on. Uh, but we still don't know uh, which of them is true, uh, if any. Um, they have remained purely mathematical constructions. And also the theory, I think, that uh, gravity uh, can change over, lo over long distances, um, monad or something? Oh, mond. mond uh, yeah. That's modified gravity. Yeah. Uh, that's actually addressing a different problem that we have in the foundations of physics. Uh, which is that uh, we have all those observations uh, that are attributed to dark matter, but we don't know what it is. Um, we actually don't even know if, if it actually is some kind of matter. Um, a lot of particle physicists think that it is a particle. Um, that's what particle physicists do. Um, but there is an alternative explanation, uh, which is that gravity has to be modified on long distances. Uh, and that's um, called um, modified Newtonian dynamics, mm. um, abbreviated as MOND. Yeah. Um, and that, that's one particular type of modified gravity. There are actually um, different kinds of uh, theories that fall into the same category. Um, but either way, um, whether we do have to add a new particle to the standard model or whether we have to modify gravity, we have to change something about the foundations of physics. And um, this problem with dark matter has been known since the 1930s, uh, pretty much for the same time that we have known that we need a theory of quantum gravity. So it's not like it's a new problem, mm -hmm. uh, but we still don't have an answer. And the uh, uh, experimental evidence for that seems to be strong because uh, galaxies uh, turn or stars uh, 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 revolve in galaxies faster than they should based upon the mass that we see. 
So there has to be something different than the, uh, the, the Newtonian calculations, even modified by general relativity because of the speed of, of rotations of, of objects, right? One has to be very careful about uh, exactly what the evidence is speaking for. Uh, what the observations tell us very clearly is that the gravitational, the normal gravitational pull of the already known matter alone does not yeah. explain the observations. Right, right. That's and well uh, yeah. there are two ways that uh, we can make the theories fit with the data again, which is either to postulate that there is additional matter that uh, we, we don't know what it is, yeah, yeah. or that gravity uh, works differently. But yes, the um, observational evidence that we are missing something is very, very strong and has only gotten stronger. So now we characterize two different kinds of, uh, of uh, uncertainties or unknowns and foundations of physics. Uh, uh, the one we just discussed is uh, is the, the uh, nature of do we need dark matter and then also the dark energy to explain the accelerating expansion of the universe. Is there something else that we need or some of the uh, uh, some of the assumptive theories need to be modified? Uh, and then the first one that you mentioned, of course, is the unification of uh, gravity into a quantum gravity system. Are there any other big categories of uh, uh, problems in foundational physics? It depends on who you ask. I'm you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're my uh, big problem. For, uh, for what advisor. I'm concerned, I think that these are uh, the most serious problems, uh, the ones that we should focus our effort on. Um, personally, I would also add the measurement problem in quantum mechanics, uh, but I think that a lot of oh. my colleagues would disagree with that. Um, but as a matter of fact, um, there are a lot of other problems that attract a lot of attention in the foundations of physics, um, which I personally don't think are serious problems. Um, one is, for example, the so-called hierarchy problem. That's the question why gravity is so much weaker yeah. than the other forces that we have. 10 to the have. minus 40th or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 42, something oh, yeah. like that. Um, people sometimes find it confusing um, to hear that gravity is so weak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah right. It's, it's, the it's the only force that is left <laughs> on, on long distances uh, yeah. while all the, all the other forces neutralize. Um, so this is why we see gravity so prominently in our daily life. Um, but if you look at the original strength of the interaction, then all the other um, forces that we have in the sun model are much more stronger. And why that is so, um, no one knows. Uh, that's what is called the hierarchy problem. Um, personally, I think that it's not a good problem to think about uh, because uh, it, it might just be the way that the universe is.